previous videos, we mentioned about the design of the RC stair is very identical to the design of the RC slab. Most of the design steps it will be similar using the same series of the equations as well as the similar criteria for checking the stability of the staircase. We also highlighted the differences in terms of the design considerations between the staircase and the slab, which we need to estimate the average thickness of the staircase for us to compute the self-weight as a part of the permanent actions and we will use the formulas m equals to fl per 10 for us to determine the moment adding onto the staircase as for the calculations for the shear force as long as we are able to determine the udl adding along the span of the staircase the calculations will be rather straightforward for us to determine the shear loops acting on the staircase. The step will be very identical to the slab. Now let us look into the calculation steps for the design of the staircase. As listed in the slide here, first you will need to estimate the average thickness of the staircase which we have discussed in our previous videos in terms of the conversions of the waste into Y and then to the T which is the Y plus R per 2 the R here represents the riser with the average thickness you multiply the unit weight of the concrete you will be able to determine the self weight of the staircase which later plus the finishes and the permanent load you will be able to determine the permanent actions and for the euro code one you will be able to determine the variable actions multiply factors of safety 1.35 and 1.5 you have the design load next you analyze the actions moment and shear Depending the existence of the adjacent slab, the staircase will be considered as a continuous span or simple ended span. The moment will be the FL per 10. You will need to be careful with the locations of the moment, where at the mid span there will be positive moment and at the support there will be negative moment. The locations of the moment will determine the locations of the main reinforcement bar which later is to be incorporated within the RC staircase. Next, you will need to design for the main and secondary reinforcement bar. Based on the amount of reinforcement bar proposed, check the maximum and minimum bar area. Check the shear resistance of the member check for the deflections check for crackings as well as provide detailings the slide here summarizes the equations that are used in the design of the staircase based on the list of the equation here you will see that most of the equations are very identical to the RC slab you encounter this calculating for the reinforcement for moment resistance within the staircase in both the beams and RC slab. You calculate the K and check again 0 0.167. Similar like slab, normally the calculated K will be less than 0 0.167 due to relatively large cross sections versus the loads adding onto the member. If it is less than 0 0.167, that means the compression reinforcement is not required. When the compression reinforcement is not required, the calculation steps become relatively easy, where you just need to determine the lever arm to be less than 0 0.95 D, and determine the amount of reinforcement bar. 
However, if the provided thickness is relatively small, there is still chances of having decay more than 0 0.167 where you will require the compression reinforcement bar. And the relevant equations you may refer to the chapters on the beam. Normally, we will try to avoid the requirements of the compression reinforcement bar, which can easily be done by slightly increasing the effective depth of the staircase. And this is usually for a more economical design that reduces the intensity in terms of the usage of the reinforcement within the staircase. Next, based on the area of reinforcement calculated, you will propose the amount of reinforcement on basis of the effective width of 1 meter, similar light slabs, in the mode of T10 or T12, T16, with the specified spacing between the reinforcement bar. Based on the amount of reinforcement bar proposed, you will need to check the maximum and minimum amount of reinforcement bar. These equations may be used to check for the minimum amount of reinforcement bar, as acquired from the clause 9.2.1.1. Normally, you don't have to check for the maximum reinforcement bar area. It is because of the large effective cross-sectional area as compared to the amount of reinforcement provided. Even if you check, Normally, you will have the maximum amount of reinforcement bar not being exceeded. If you are not sure, you can always check for that, but most likely it's going to pass on that particular aspect. As for the secondary reinforcement bar, it is mainly meant for controlling the crackings within the staircase, as well as to tie the reinforcement bar together forming a cage of reinforcement bar for the casting purpose of the staircase. A simple rule to determine the amount of secondary reinforcement bar, it will be at least 20% of the required reinforcement bar area as the main reinforcement bar. That means whichever AS that you calculated here, it is multiplied by 20% that will be the minimum amount of reinforcement bar required as the secondary reinforcement. Next, you will need to check for the shear resistance. Due to large effective cross-sectional area, the equations that you use to calculate the shear resistance it will be similar to the slab, where there are two main equations here. One is resistance of the concrete, Another one, it will be the minimum resistance of the concrete. You've seen these two equations from the design of the RC slab. There will be row 1, which represents the areas divided by the BD of the staircase, which represents the amount of the reinforcement bar within the cross sections of the staircase. And there will be factor K here which is calculated on basis of the effective depth of the staircase. Substitute the relevant value into the two equations here. A larger value of the two should be selected to be compared with the shear loops acting onto the staircase. Normally, the shear resistance will be greater than the shear loops of the staircase. And when the resistance is greater than the shear loops, that means no additional shear reinforcement is required. But if you found the VRDC to be less than VED, that means you will require additional shear reinforcement and the design step will be more tedious. And for a more economical solutions, you can simply add up the thickness of the staircase so that you don't have to increase the amount of the reinforcement bar significantly to ensure the staircase pass the shear resistance. This calculation steps is meant for checking purposes.
for you to ensure sufficient shear reinforcements of the staircase. Now that you have done the ultimate limit state design, you should check for the serviceability. You will need to check for the deflections, which the equation here you are also very familiar. You seen this in the design of the beam as well as the design of these slabs. Now you're going to adopt this also in the design of the staircase. There are two sets of the formulas here. Depending on the differences between the rho relative to rho naught. To be simply said, in the case that no compression reinforcement bar is required, normally we will use the first equation here. The component within the equation here, such as the k here, we will need to refer to the table of k given in the Eurocode 2. As for the other components, you may refer to here. The calculated value, it will be the L per D limit. And this is to be compared with the L per D actual, based on the dimensions proposed for the staircase. There will be some modification factors to be applied to L per D limits, depending on the conditions. Specifically, you're talking about when the span is more than 7 meters, or when the amount of reinforcement bar provided is more than 500 Newton per mm square, and also when the provided areas of reinforcement bar is greater than the required area of reinforcement bar. Now your L per D limits is to be checked against the L per D actual, where the L per D actual should be less than the limit. If it is greater than that, the staircase will fail by deflection. And I would say that the chances of the staircase to fail in deflections is relatively high. Therefore, in the design of the staircase, make sure you always check for the deflection. The reason being is due to the limited depth of the staircase as compared to a typical beam. The situations will be slightly different than the slabs where a typical slab is normally supported by the beams adjacent to it, which is at the all four side. And when you need to check for the deflections of the slab, normally you are looking at the shorter span, as the shorter span is always the most critical one in terms of the moment distributions. And since it is at the shorter span, even though the depth of the sections is limited, the L per D actuals would typically be low. Therefore, there is high chance for the slab to pass as compared to the L per D limits. However, when you deal with the staircase, the effective span is usually more or less equivalent to a typical effective span of a beam. But now the thickness of the staircase is limited. Out of the long L, but limited D. This will give you a high L per D ratio and there is high chance for it to not fulfilling the requirements of the deflections. This you need to be careful. Next, you might need to check for the other serviceability conditions such as the maximum spacing of the reinforcement bar. Now, if your effective thickness of the staircase is less than 200 mm, you may use the simple rule of thumbs, which define the maximum spacing for the main reinforcement bar similar to a slab, which is three times the thickness of the staircase or 400 mm, whichever is smaller. As for the secondary reinforcement bar, you are talking about 3.5 times the thickness of the slab and 450 mm. In the case that your effective depth of the staircase is more than 200 mm, 
you have to use these equations to determine the stress acting within the reinforcement bar and refers to table 7.3 and in Eurocode 2 part 1 depending on the classifications normally we are talking about the common usage which the crack width is limited by 0.3 mm and from this table based on the FS acquired you are able to determine the maximum allowable bar spacings between the reinforcement bars what you see here Eurocode has been quite established where the formulas and equations are rather standardized that is applicable to different types of the structural element for the design of those structural elements you see identical equations for the beams, for the slab and for the staircase as long as you are able to determine the loading in fact you can use a standardized calculation step across the board to check every single type of the structural element however due to the unique characteristics of different structural element let's say now the beams are normally with long span and with high effective depth let's say now the slab is normally related to the shorter span with large cross-sectional area and let's say now you're talking about the staircase long span large cross-sectional area but low effective depth because of the conditions of different structural elements are different the applications of the equations in terms of the emphasis would vary slightly due to the low effective cross-sectional area of the beam shear resistance is an issue due to the long span of the beam the moment resistance as well as the deflections of the beam is an issue due to the small cross-sectional area the minimum spacing of the reinforcement bar is an issue for the beam however when you come to the slab and the staircase the effective cross-sectional area is relatively large that means now your minimum bar spacing is not a concern and most likely the maximum bar spacing will be a concern maximum amount of reinforcement bar is a concern for the beam but not for the slab and staircase and when you calculate for the deflection the slabs normally refers to the shorter effective span the deflection is not a concern but when you come to the staircase it will be a concern what you see here the emphasis varies in accordance to the conditions of the structural element knowing how to apply the equations is one thing really understand the natures as well as their unique characteristics that leads to different design considerations it will be more important this is so that you can quickly pinpoint the critical criteria in terms of the design and minimize your effort in terms of the design and checking for the stability of the structure